Hello, friends. This is Robert Mead, your imagination coach. And uh, today we're going to dive in slowly but surely deeper into why I have uh, chosen to focus for this channel uh, to be the power of imagination. Okay. My uh, background, just real briefly, uh, is 45 years in studying books like Think and Grow Rich and many others related to how to accomplish your goals, right? Studied Brian Tracy quite a bit. Uh, he was amazing in help about goal achieving. I uh, took a 13-month uh, training with Bob Proctor, who was uh, one of the uh, one of the stars of that movie, The Secret. Right? Um, I ended up being a coach for with and for Bob Proctor. He uh, also believed very strongly in uh, my favorite teacher whose name might be unfamiliar to some of you, but his name is Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard was um, an amazing man that was born in the early 1900s. He was very literate, a huge library, and he was a very deep studier of the laws of creation, the laws of the universe, you could say. What brings about the accomplishment of our goals based on the mind and psychology and focusing and knowing what you want and then bringing it about. So the power of imagination has everything to do with accomplishing your goals. Now your goals could be tremendously varied, right? I've had various goals throughout my life, and so my focus has changed as I've grown older. I'm now in retirement, and leading into retirement, my goal was to live in the tropics. It evolved into really focusing on wanting to live in Southeast Asia, okay? And uh, as I may mentioned in my other videos, I lived in Bali, Indonesia for two years during COVID, and even before, before that, nine months in Playa del Carmen in Mexico during the worst of COVID in 2020 and in 2021, finally moving to Southeast Asia. It's been two years in Bali. After visiting my family recently, I am now living in the Philippines. I'm on my sixth island so far in seven weeks. I'm having an amazing adventure. But today we're not going to focus on the Philippines. I'm not going to be showing you a lot of beautiful pictures of my travel at the moment. I'm in currently in the, the island of Cebu, right, in Cebu City in the Philippines, if you're curious. Okay, I'm up here on the 45th floor of the uh, 101 Horizon Tower that I'm currently staying at. So I wanted to really start to develop and get into the law of assumption, which is the basis for using the power of your imagination. Now, what is the law of assumption? I'm going to help you understand that by reading the following from one of my favorite books that I highly recommend that you get. You can get it for free online and Google it, or you can purchase it, paperback or otherwise. And the name of the book is The Power of Awareness. The Power of Awareness. And so this is what Neville Goddard said in chapter 3 of The Power of Awareness, the chapter being called The Power of Assumption. So it's all related, awareness, assumption, and imagination. Let's tie those together. Neville said that all that befalls a man, all that is done by him, all that comes from him happens as a result of the state of consciousness. A man's consciousness what you are aware of, what you think upon, all that you think and desire and love. Right? That is consciousness. It's your self-concept. What fills your mind? What do you think about, desire, love? All that he believes is true and consents to. That is what you're conscious of. That is why 
a change of consciousness is necessary before you can change your outer world. So the focus of this site also is to help those who would like to make improvements, changes, maybe even radical changes in their current life. Okay, And it's whatever your desire is, is nothing to do with mine, right? It's what you personally desire for your life. That's all that matters. Neville said, be transformed by renewing your mind. To be transformed, the whole basis of your thoughts must change. But your thoughts cannot change unless you have new ideas. For you think from your ideas. So your world, and this may be hard to swallow at first, your environment, what you're experiencing in your life now has everything to do with what you believe, right? It both limits you and or gives you the possibility for expansion, depending on what you believe and accept and consent to. So Neville said the first step in renewing the mind is what? Desire, right? You must want to be different and intend to be different before you can begin to change yourself. So that's where it all starts is what do you desire? What do you actually want? If someone sat you down and gave you a pen and paper and said, just go to a quiet place and think about it. Just be still. Forget about your troubles. Forget all about, don't tell me about all the things that are going wrong in your life and, and all those things in your life currently. But if you could have, do, or be anything that you want to do, be, or have, what would it be? Write it out. That's your deep centered heart desire, right? So now it goes on to say, that you, to create an ideal of the person you want to be, you have to assume that you already are that person. So this is where I think we differ from, although there's similarities with uh, the law of attraction that I know some of you are familiar with, some of you love or not, but uh, the law of attraction was that idea that you attract what you, what you feel and think about, and that's very similar to the law of assumption. The Law of Assumption really puts a focus on, and Neville Goddard, through his books and lecture, lectures, really put a focus on, that you have to assume that you have it already. So, for example, I just got laid off from my corporate job with Hilton Hotels. COVID had just begun. I got COVID. The early, uh, late part of March, I had COVID for nine days. I was quite sick. Never went to a hospital. We didn't even know what to call it yet. Okay, It was still being identified at that time, if you remember, in early 2020. And yet, my attitude was that I was going to live on a beach in the islands. That's what I was going to do. That was my mental state of mind, and that's what Neville refers to this consciousness as being also. It's a state of consciousness. What are you aware of? What do you believe in your life as true? But the key with this is you have to believe that it's already happened. You follow? You have to believe that it's already occurred in your life. And that's tough. It's a tough thing to, in the beginning because you say, well, Robert, I'm facing all kinds of stuff in my life. I have bills. I have kids. I have family. I just went through a terrible divorce, perhaps, or I'm having trouble at home. I'm uh, not making enough money to put food on my table. I, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Or uh, I have a severe uh, alcohol drug problem. I have other habits that you don't know how hard that is, Robert. I've really got some things I want to change. Or there just may be some tweaks in your life that you want to improve. What's well, all about you? Again, not what I want for you. But where do you start? You have to start with knowing where you want to end up. What would the end result look like okay. if you had what you wanted it? What would it feel like? What would it look like if you were already there? Because you have to already have that visualized and pictured where you want to end up. And then assume that it's yours. Hence, the law of assumption, right? Assuming that you already have it. Um, here's another thought from Neville in that same third chapter. He says you really have to be dedicated to that desire, okay? So for example, you need to be, if you're perhaps suffering from a health condition, you need to be conscious that you're already cured, that you're already healthy, if you are to know what health is, right? You need to be already conscious of being secure, 
if it's security you seek, whether that be monetary or with a partner or whatever that means for you, security. You need to be conscious that you already are secure even though it is not seen yet in your life. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. But it's a process that works. Now, I'm telling you this based not just on a book, but this is my personal experience. This stuff works, right? So you must assume that you already are what you want to be and then live by faith in the assumption that you already are that. I know this sounds very woo-woo to some of you. To some of you, it might sound like, this is just not real or realistic. Um, Robert, I live in the real world. I don't live in imagination. Well, um, name me one thing in this world that was not first imagined. Right? The chair I'm sitting on. The laptop that I'm on, the telephone that I use, right? 50, 60 years ago, remember the cartoon Dick Tracy with the, the phone, the phone watch telephone on, a, on your wrist? That was simply imagined. There was no way. Remember back in the early 60s and 50s, there was all these movies about science fiction and, and space exploration, right? There was no way any of that was going to come true. It was too amazing to, to believe. And now the things in the world, I mean, the fact you can pick up a cell phone and communicate with somebody on the other side of the world like that, who could ever remember that? Back when I was a kid, when they had the dial-up telephones or we had the coins we had to put in the, you know, in the machine to make a long-distance phone call, right? So everything was imagined. Everything from a simple broom to a complex computer had to be imagined first. Right. So it does start with imagination. Another point is that you have to fully be committed to that desire. How bad do you want it? How bad do you re want to replace a bad habit, for example, with a good habit? It took you years to get maybe programmed in developing that bad habit or the habit you'd like to change, right? Or the thinking pattern that you'd like to change. Are you going to change all that overnight? No, no. And that's where the coaching comes in. See, I'm an imagination coach, and I help people develop a plan, stay on that plan, and see it through. For some, it only may, may take a few weeks or months before they, they see their world completely change. For others, it might take much longer. But looking back, is it worth it? Oh, it's worth every minute. Absolutely. If you could imagine yourself a year from now looking back at your life of what you wanted and seeing it accomplished, would it have been worth that year of struggle and persistence? Absolutely. So this again was uh, just kind of a small taste of what the law of assumption is, right? And how to use your imagination. We're going to get more in detail of how to use your imagination and how to consistently, persistently do that and see things change in your world. So it's been a pleasure talking to you. I know you'll have questions. Well, I have the answers, and they will be forthcoming. Because this is not theory. This is not something I hope to try and, and help you with. This is something I've helped people with in 45 countries as a coach. Right? So this is not hearsay. This is based on practice on exercises that you utilize in your life. Uh, meditations, right? This is based on uh, teachers like especially Neville Goddard, but also Bob Proctor and Joe Dispenza and many others, okay? And then I've used these in my own life and help others use them in their lives to see results. So I'm going to keep it uh, under 15 minutes, and we're right about there. So... I want to thank you for listening and watching. If this is a bit confusing to some of you that are new to it, but you're interested, stay with me. It will gradually become more understandable and practical for you in the coming days and weeks. And I thank you very much for watching. I do want to see your comments. Okay, please keep them polite. You can be honest and straightforward, but let's keep things positive, okay? Thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe. And like and please comment. Thank you so much and I'll be talking again with you soon.